Well hi folks, 1st of August, it's supposed to be midsummer, still raining, so I'll just give you a quick tour and see how things are progressing. As you can see I've got plenty of peas, but they're looking a bit sickly at the bottom like they would do in sort of September time, they're sort of dying back at the bottom, but there's still plenty of peas on. These are the Hearst grain shaft, the cracking peas, you get tons. I'll just give you a quick look. It's hard doing this with one hand. Probably not a good idea. One handed pea, pea emptying. So as you can see, there's a few missing in there. Decent peas, I'll just eat them. That's them eating. Right, moving on, I've got some. They're the leeks are transplanted. I could do with a bit of weeding actually, but I've just been a bit busy there lately. But the leeks are transplanted. They've all taken well. Setting a lot of beetroot, doing all right. Kale's flying along in all this uh, wet weather. All green, leafy stuff seems to love it. And they're the giant jumbo shallots that I did a video of the other day. If you can see, they're absolutely huge. They're just they're from sets. It's not from sets, from seed. New one to me, so I'll be doing those next year. Setting a lot of lettuces. Lettuces have done really well this year. Thanks again to the rain. Got a few beetroot that are ready to pull now. Spring onions again. Never grown them outside well. They just seem to take forever. And there's some of the earlier lettuces. And as you can see, some of the little gems have, have bolted because I grow that many. I can't keep up with eating them. So garlic still growing. So God knows how long that'll be before it collapses, there should be some decent bulbs eventually. And then I've got my Brussels sprouts again in, under the protection, they're just about outgrowing it but they look good, they're as good as I've ever grown because I'm not very good at growing Brussels sprouts. As I've said before, I always get blowers so. Setting a lot of peas, first green shaft again. So we'll see how they get on. Let's have a look in the, the old polytunnel. Right, what have we got? French beans, absolutely millions of them now. There's armfuls of beans hanging all the way up. So I train it across, I've got tons coming. So absolutely loaded up with beans. Courgette plant, that's just a crazy plant. It just sends courgettes out on a daily basis. They're about two or three every single day. Sends them out of the bottom, up the sides. Pretty bonkers really. These are some of my giant onions, but they've, uh, I think they've given up the ghost. I think they were fed up with the weather. You can see the size, it's probably about £5. But I think it's just about giving up growing. If you look at the top, they've all flopped over. And it's not putting on much more size. But what would you expect in this weather we've had this year? These are my smaller onions for the smaller class at the shows, but they're just not made any weight this year. They're way behind last year, so I'll just eat those they're not big enough for any of the classes. And then we've got my bigger onions, my bigger kelsies. I'll just get around my tobacco plant. Which are doing reasonably well, but I've got, it's been so moist and damp, I've got so much of this leaf mould problem on the leaves. I've never had that before, but it's just, it's just, they're just moist. It's just humid and damp and mouldy conditions. Just totally conducive to mould and rot and stuff like that. So anyway, I'll give you a quick look at the size. They're probably about three and a half pound now. So they're doing all right, but not nowhere near as good as I'd hoped. I was hoping for about five pounds, but they're not too bad. Really, I've got a few. I've got about seven or eight to go at in this uh, in this bed. That's one of the giant ones. That that went a bit big, but it did send out double leaves. So it's no good for anything. Still getting loads of strawberries from those bare-rooted things I planted. They've been so productive, it's unbelievable, considering they were just little cheap, cheap plants I stuck in. Not expecting anything. These are my shallots for sure. All dried up quite nicely. They're a nice shape, nice uh, even round shape. It's what you're looking for, really. They're a bit on the small side, but they'll be all right. We'll go outside. It's a bit windy, so you might not be able to hear me. As you can see Crocosmia is coming out which usually is a sign of autumn coming up here. It usually only comes out in September but it's out already. So that doesn't bode well. A few of my little wildflowers are starting to come out now but this wind will be 
blown away by the end of today, I hope be on it. You can't know anywhere. So I've got a few bits and pieces. And this is where I, I had all my spuds growing. Like I say, I got blight. So I dug every spud up and harvested the lot. So now I've just got this massive heap of compost and nothing growing. Same again, big, big bare bed, nothing in it. So that's a bit depressing, not having any spuds growing. And this is me, uh, show carrot and parsnip bit. The long carrots are absolutely pitiful this year. They've just not grown at all. The parsnips aren't much better. They're reasonably sized, but I don't know how big they'll be underneath. Stump carrots. They're not too bad, but they're nowhere near as big as I'd like them to be, so they've been a bit of a disaster this year, considering all the effort it's involved in shoveling like seven or eight tonne of sand and boring it out, then to not get anything out at the end of it, it's a bit uh, annoying to say the least. Now we're going to the last bit, the boggy bit, which is just underwater really now, it's just so wet, you can see it's just all the paths, it's just mud and water everywhere. Again, another bare bit where all my potatoes were again, had to pull them out. There was just one survivor, Golden Wonder, that didn't seem to get any blight at all, so it stood out and didn't get it where they all, everything else got blight, but that one didn't, so Golden Wonder, that might be a blight resistant one for you. It's all a bit depressing, onions, total onion failure this year. They're absolutely tiny and they've flopped over, so they're ready now. And they're not the uh, sort of yellow onions, they're just pitiful, absolutely minute. A few more bits of beetroot in. A bit of purple sprouting broccoli, which I think I planted a bit late, but I just can't stand empty beds. Not in, in August anyway. Overwintering garlic's still growing. Still, still just standing up, so I'll just keep that until it until it keels over properly, just to make the bulbs as big as I can. And I've got my mara growing there, but I'll save that till the last because you might be quite interested in that. Now this is me pumpkin, oh excuse me, pumpkin patch and as you can see it's about 20 foot long now the pumpkin only trouble is there's no bloody pumpkin on it so I've got a massive plant but no bloody pumpkin because as soon as you get a, a, a female out with the fruit on the male flower comes out and because it rains it just washes all the pollen off so you can't, you can't pollinate it anyway I did manage to pollinate one but I think it's a bit of a mutant, if I can get my camera down. <laughs> because if you can see inside, it's sort of like all these seeds appeared. It's like it's thrown up. Thrown up its seeds into the flower head, so I don't think that'll do any good. There's another one there done similar, so I think I've got some kind of genetic balls up with this one. Massive plant, but nothing on it. So anyway, so we're not getting to them, not growing them again, because it's been such a faff growing it. Looking after it, making sure it didn't blow away in all this weather. So we'll see. We might have set it more. If it doesn't, then I won't bother again. And then finally, this is the Mara, which is quite a success this year so far. As you can see, it's split into three main vines. There's one growing back, and the main body's going all the way up there. It's humongous, just one plant, and then this is the other one. So I managed to set one about a week ago as a bit of a safety that's one that's only three days old I've put my foot there you can see how big it is so that was just in case the one that set this is only 15 days old this one 15 days since setting if I could put my hand in you might get an idea I can't get to it because there's that bloody leaves everywhere there you go that's it 15 days it's about 18 inches long and it's probably about I think it's about 18 pounds judging by the way you, you measure them and you can guess the weight. So that's 15 days, so if it keeps growing at that rate, it should have a real monster by September if it keeps growing. So that's about it really, from a wet, boggy, miserable Yorkshire. That's it. So I'll see you later.